Hey everyone. Happy on seven day. Uh, welcome uh, to our Twitch stream. Hey guys in hey Montreal, guys in Montreal. Montreal, we'd like you, like you to mute, mute uh, uh, the stuff, please. Uh, huh. Anyway, sorry about that. Uh, welcome to our Twitch screen, stream and happy on seven day. We are excited to be talking with you guys and uh, showing you a few things today in honor of N7 Day, uh, because obviously the community is first, and we really appreciate you all tuning in. My name is Mike Gamble. I'm a producer on the franchise. Yeah, I'm Mac Walters, uh, creative director uh, on the Mass Effect franchise right now. We're wishing you a, a warm N7 Day from a very cold and chilly Edmonton. Uh, we also have some folks from Montreal that want to say hi. Hi everyone, uh, happy N7 day. I'm uh, Fabrice Colavines. I'm the producer for Mass Effect at BioWare Montreal. And I'm Chris Wynn, the Senior Development Director here on the next Mass Effect. And I'm Yannick Roy, I'm the Studio Director for BioWare Montreal. Um, so before we go further into a bit of our background here and introducing ourselves a bit more, I wanted to take a, a second to uh, mention that this year is a bit of a special N7 day because Usually, uh, for N7, all of Bioware's focus really is on Mass Effect. It's, it's a sci-fi franchise, but also on its fans. Uh, this year, because of Dragon Age having only recently uh, gone gold and being on the verge of release, uh, it has received a lot of, deservedly, a lot of the, the attention uh, leading to now. Uh, Dragon Age is a project that has required a lot of effort from, from the team. So I wanted to take uh, time to thank the team for all their effort, but also congratulate them on putting together what is really, really a great game. Uh, and I want to tell them that I'm convinced that it, it will get the great reception that it deserves. Um, as a guy in charge of Mass Effect, of course, uh, I also have to express how happy I am to see that a lot of people who were on Dragon Age up until recently are now transferring onto our project. And with them, they bring all the experience they acquired building the first Bioware RPG on the Frostbite engine, and it's helping us really take things to the next level uh, with our game here. Um, so, so yeah, maybe now we can talk a little bit more about us. Our bios, as some of you might know, were posted uh, earlier on this morning for some of, uh, of the team members there. But basically, I've been with Bioware for uh, almost nine years now. Uh, this was my first game in the uh, my first job in the game industry, uh, but right from the beginning I was involved with the Mass Effect franchise, uh, Mass Effect One, Two, and Three, uh, playing different roles there. Uh, so I, I was lucky enough because coming to to Bioware, I came as a huge fan of you know playing Baldur's Gate, playing Knights of the Old Republic, uh, playing Jade. Um, so for me, it was really a um, privilege to be able to have spend my entire career working on not only with, within Bioware but on a franchise like Mass Effect. Um, we have people who have joined us more uh, recently, but who are as passionate about Bioware and uh, Mass Effect as a franchise. Yeah, I'm the I'm the newest guy here on the on the stream, uh, having just joined Bioware a little over a year ago. Um, I have uh, a little over 15 years of experience in the industry, um, and I've had the incredible opportunity to work on a, a lot of very very successful franchises. Um, I still to you know even even today waking up, I remember the day I got the email. Um, to see if there'd be any interest in coming and joining Bioware to work on, on Mass Effect. Um, it was a no-brainer, and I couldn't reply fast enough because I've been such a massive fan of this franchise um, since, it, since it first appeared on Xbox. Um, you know, for me, it was, it, was, it was that kind of science fiction fantasy. You know, I, I grew up in the 80s. I grew up around Star Wars and a lot of other big science fiction, uh, you know, franchises. And to be able to, to see that brought to life and, and fill some of those childhood fantasies for me was a was uh, something that, that, you know, I just haven't seen in, in any other video gaming franchises. So the ability to come and contribute and, uh, and work on a lot of this great stuff, um, one, as a fan, and two, as, as being someone who works in the industry, was just something I, I was not going to say no to and I couldn't say no to. And so, uh, you know, I've had a lot, of, a, lot of, a lot of highlights in my career. This so far is, is, is probably the biggest right now. Uh, you know, what we're looking to do with this Mass Effect as, as we'll get ready to show you some of this stuff um, is just really, really exciting. Um, and to be able to work with these guys is, has just been great. So I've started in the video game industry around the same time, 14, 15 years ago, as a game designer in France. Um, to give you an idea, I've, I've designed a multiplayer game in on Java with Java, so it gives you an idea how old that was. <laughs> But uh, yeah, since then I work on a lot of genres, probably about all the genres and uh, platforms. 
Um, and I've also produced a number of work in a different industry. I produced some uh, music videos. I did some research in semantic technology as an ontologist, and no, I won't explain what that is. <laughs> um, and But uh, the most important part for me is that one of the reasons I started in the video game industry at that point, even if I have no clue what a game designer was, uh, <laughs> was because mostly because of a game called Bardus Gate that I know a lot of people have fond memories of. So it tells you an idea how excited I was uh, when 10 years later I got an opportunity to join uh, the Bioware studio here in Montreal. It was a, a brand new studio and uh, they offered me a, a production job to take care at the time of the creative team uh, based in Montreal. And uh, from there, I worked on Mass Effect 3, did a lot of uh, multiplayer level cinematics. So again, all the creative team that were based in Montreal and uh, we work a lot on DLCs, especially the Omega DLC. And um, moving to the next Mass Effect, uh, now we're working as the main producer for Montreal and with my counterpart in Edmonton, who's Mike over there. Yeah. Um, um, First, before First, I, I talk about myself, the, the people on the stream on the and the people and who gave their bios, bios earlier today, uh, they're, they're just a part of the leadership team on the game. Just to remember that uh, we're basically comprised of a whole bunch of different individuals, and we're going to continue to be showcasing some of these individuals as time goes on. So what you're seeing today is kind of just a subset. Anyway, uh, I've been in the industry about nine years. I've worked with EA uh, previously uh, at EAC. And I moved to Bioware about five and a half years ago. And I can easily say that Bioware is my favorite game dev studio that I've ever worked with. Um, the talent here has been absolutely amazing. And it's been great to work with all the great individuals. I think that uh, when I first started on Mass Effect 2, it was one of the most rewarding experiences for me. I learned a lot about what it means to make a Bioware game. And making a Bioware game is a very different kind of experience. Um, so when I worked on Mass Effect 2, I learned a lot, and basically that was a really great project. And then afterwards, I was given the opportunity to lead some of the DLC pieces. Uh, Layer the Shadow Broker was one of those. Um, many of you, that little gem. Uh, and then moving into Mass Effect 3, I was producer for various different features, uh, working again with, with the team. And I led the development of all the DLC, or most of the DLC, rather, um, after the end of Mass Effect 3, I moved on to multiplayer DLC, single-player DLC. Some of those things included uh, co-producing the Citadel, working with the Extended Cut, three DLCs that we did for Mass Effect. So it's been really, it's been a great ride for me so far. Um, I think that taking all of the experience that I've had from the previous games uh, into the new game is going to be really important. Making sure that this does feel like a Mass Effect game, that's one of my primary uh motives here and uh just to have fun doing it yeah uh, um i've uh, fans out there i'm sure you're familiar with uh, uh my role in the past mass effect games as a uh, writer lead writer on mass effect 2 and 3 um and maybe even all the way back to jade empire i've been in mass effect for almost uh mass effect world for almost 10 years now <coughs> and uh you know i think um for me right now the most exciting thing i'm seeing is that this is a, a universe that you know i had a part in helping to build with a fantastic team on the trilogy. And we accomplished so much in that. And yet now, uh, you know, working with this other team, they're bringing such a, a high level of passion and a new vision towards what we're doing that uh, it's just, it's exciting to be at work, you know, pretty much every day because we're going to see some concepts here in a second. And they're holding on to that Mass Effect legacy, you know, what we know to be true about it, but we're also just using that as a foundation to leap forward to do new and exciting things. Yeah, d totally. I mean, the, the whole idea of making the next Mass Effect game is not to simply do Mass Effect 4, right? As we said before, the idea is to really bring the franchise forward, really introduce a whole bunch of new concepts there. Uh, and speaking of concepts, we've you always like to, to give our fans kind of the first look at things. We've done that before with our panels. We've done that before with many different things, and this is no exception. So on N7 Day, we want to talk a little bit about some of the concepts that we've been preparing for the next Mass Effect and how those are inspiring us and guiding our development. Yeah, I think, you know, one of the interesting things um, I always like to talk about, because I, I get asked this a lot about, you know, well, what comes first? Is it, is it, the, is it the writing or the design for, for a concept like this, uh, or is the art lead? And the answer to that is it, it depends. 
uh, a lot of times uh, design writing does sort of have a, an early vision for things, but then we'll see a concept like this. I know for me personally, back when I was writing, I'd see something like this and it would inspire me to go off and write even more, which and in turn might, might you know, cause you know, the next round of iterations on this, on this uh, concept we're working on. And it, it's, it's very much a back and forth and it's part of what I think really makes game design you know, so much fun and, and, and so rewarding is that it is that sort of uh, chance to go into work to inspire someone, but in turn be inspired. No, I think no, it's I think pretty, pretty obvious, obvious in this one that this we, one that we uh, the Mako down there in the bottom. So can you tell us a little bit about that? We're hearing a lot of people excited about it. So the the game that we've talked about so far and that, that we we're building, first of all, it it's at its core a Mass Effect game. It's a game that's deeply about characters, deeply about story. But one of the main pillars that we have is also based on exploration. And we've shown a, a few things to that end so far. This is just another. So... Obviously, you see the Mako down there. We've previously shown the Mako. And uh, part of the experience is, you know, exploring the vastness of space, exploring the vastness of these different kinds of planets, alien planets, um, more terrestrial-looking planets, things like that. So this is just one example of one of the types of experience that we want to be building for you guys. Yeah, and I think uh, what's important also, when you look at those uh, concepts, is the inspirational part of it. This is the, the key and the use of those concepts. So they are here to give you a mood, a general feeling around what we're going for. And uh, regarding the Mako, it's also important now. Everybody knows that the, the Mako is back. But bringing back the Mako is one thing. Then you need to offer in that game the opportunities to use it the best way possible and, and to use it, as Mike mentioned, exploration being one of the, the main pillars of our game, it is also what you see in those concepts and the next ones are not the, on which terrain and which capacity you use it, but what feeling are we looking for? Yeah, yeah. yeah to kind of kind of build on, you might have heard Mike earlier say, you know, well, we're not, our, we're not, our goal is to not build Mass Effect 4. It's, it's beyond that. And, and what our goal really is to build the, the biggest Mass Effect yet. Um, and that includes new, lo new locations like you can see here. It includes an all new story and all new characters and uh, and, and it's just, uh, it's just, you know, I think that's really unique to Bioware and really key to Bioware's culture and success is the ability to kind of shoot very, very high and then and then have the ability to go off and achieve it. Um, it's something that, that the team gets excited about and we're pretty sure it's something that the fans are going to be excited about as well. Right from the beginning, um, exploration is something that I was pushing for and the, and the return of the Mako because for me, um, the inspiration that we need to take uh, cannot be limited to only to the last entry in the, the Mass Effect trilogy. It really needs to be about looking at what was best in all three of the uh, the first three games, basically, and take the best out of it. And I always was a big fan of the Mako myself, uh, not necessarily the handling, but everything else about it. Um, and uh, to me, that was an important part of it. And you know, if you if you look at the vision that you have for a game, and the vision that you have for a game like Mass Effect, the how this becomes a game uh, is highly influenced by the team that you put on working on that vision and the technology that you get to use for it. So the fact that you, you know we are starting with what is absolutely true to a Mass Effect game, but we're putting a new team on it, and we're using the Frostbite engine, and actually we, we are focusing on the current gen platform, now what used to be not so long ago, we call next gen platforms. Um, and, and PC, basically, we can take things to a different level and ultimately deliver an experience that is even truer to the initial vision uh, because many of those imitations are, are removed now. So we, so we, we want to underscore, underscore the depth and depth diversity of the exploration of the experience a little bit. Um, obviously, obviously, what you saw in Mass Effect 1, we're shooting for. Uh, a lot more diversity in terms of the planet types, in terms of the types of experiences that you can have on these uh, on these worlds. Let's take a look at the next concept. So this goes to show um, that we're just shooting for a bunch of different kinds of experiences. Um, you know, as Yannick was saying before, uh, the Mako is important to us, and how we represent the Mako and that exploration experience. Obviously, we're we're still you know building and figuring out and prototyping a lot of that great stuff. But really what we want to do is keep on increasing the depth of that. And I think, you know, an, an interesting uh, point too is that when you take on exploration uh, in the way that we are uh, as, as one of the main pillars in the game, you really have to look at the gameplay. Um, you know, you, you go back and you look at uh, the Uncharted Worlds of Mass Effect 1 
and some of the Mako uh, or, uh, or vehicle play in, in Mass Effect 2, um, you know, one of the things that we always wanted to be able to explore more in that as developers was, well, what else can you do on these worlds? Um, and so one of the things that are one of our challenges that we're really focusing on right now is, well, this is fantastic. You can drive around in here. What else can you do? Or what else can you even do, you know, with the Mako? And so that's a lot of our exploration right now is really delving into what makes it not just, you know, awe-inspiring as these images show, but what makes it fun? Something that you could, you know, you're just excited to go off on on these little uh, adventures to these worlds. Yeah, I think I think a great early win for the team, and I'm, I'm jumping in because I'm so excited about this personally. The handling of the new Mako is just awesome. Yeah. It is literally just so much fun to drive. It's 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 quite a bit different than yeah. than what you experienced before. Um, I've literally gotten lost just driving around planets just because it's it's fun, and I kind of forget what I'm doing. Or is it just because you've got bad directions there, Wayne? Let's, let's uh, be right. honest. That's true. I do rely on GPS. <laughs> <laughs> but we do, and it's true. We do We do have a lot of people who play actual bid, and, and they can drive around for 20, 30 minutes without any specific reasons, and that, that gives you an idea of, of how good just the handling is and how that's as efficient and how we can also encourage anybody to explore planets, uh, any form of location with the Mako, even if they don't necessarily have a very specific goal at a given time. Uh, just because it's enjoyable to go there, and also we can, I think we can mention that the the roots of of bringing back the Mako uh, takes place in Mass Effect One, as Yannick mentioned. But I, I think also one one of the main reason is, uh, for example, Mike and I have met hundreds of fans in all sorts of Comic Con, etc., etc., and it keeps coming back from the community, and this is extremely important. They systematically mention the Mako, and then when when we you know dig into it. As you mentioned, maybe not the handling, you know, although it gave a lot of uh, very funny YouTube videos that were very <laughs> successful. Um, but it's it's the idea and the feeling that they have, and I think this is also what we try to capture. So the Mako is just one of the tools that will help us mm -hmm. capture that. Right from our first interactions with fans uh, when we we're discussing the the next Mass Effect, I, I remember that sentence that um, one of the guys told us, where you know it's called Mass Effect, not Tiny Effect. So the game needs to be massive. And that 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 kind of drove uh, some of the initial but thinking around it, you know, around exploration. And again, you can't explore space on foot, so bringing back vehicles was kind of uh, natural. And and part of what um, you know, we're not going to go through a thousand uh, pieces of concept art here, but part of what we're trying to self, uh, you know, even from the beginning, was this concept of the balance between those environments being beautiful, but at the same time having a sense of danger because pure beautiful environments that you go to that's vacation <laughs> exploration is really about feeling that you're seeing something that's unique that is very special to you but there's always this little sense of danger because you're you're the first there or you know there's a reason why it feels like exploration basically yeah, so, so to kind of riff on that a bit speaking of of the beautiful environments that we have uh, put together um it's also important to know that we're not forcing the player to do one single type of experience, right? We're not forcing the player into the Mako all the time. We're not forcing the player to, to invoke in a driving game. This is a game about choice, and, and we want to just have the Mako as one ingredient of that. So as you see here, um, we've got another uh, a concept. This is pretty evocative of something you may or may not have seen before. Um, I think that when building this, we've put a lot of effort into bringing back some of the old themes, but matching it up with a lot of the new themes that we want to push for Mass Effect. Um, as you can see, you know, obviously the, the cool sky LEDs there in the background, a lush living environment, probably not terrestrial, maybe in space, who knows. Um, that's for you guys to speculate a little bit on. Yeah, I think it's, it's a good point when we talk about the, the legacy of Mass Effect and what people uh, sort of, what are those grounding things that sort of do various groups, uh, fans, that is Mass Effect, and I think obviously the Citadel and Presidium experience from Mass Effect 1 and 2 and 3 is one of those things that people sort of look at and almost expect to see, no matter whether it was, uh, if it was a, a book you're, re you're reading, a uh, movie, if it's a future game, like what we're working on, you need to see something, uh, as Mike said, that's evocative of that. And I think that was one of the things that we were striving for when we, um, you know, not just in this specific concept, but throughout uh, the Mako uh, Rubis was talking about, you know, the fans have talked about that a lot and how much that means to them. We want to make sure that, that we're bringing some of those things back with a twist, something new to them as well. Cool. 
<laughs> yeah. Oh, what I wanted to, to add there is like it kind of ties into the, the, the previous point. But I remember even on Mass Effect One and having conversations with with Derek, uh, Derek West, who was the art director uh, on the first trilogy, was mentioning about how important it is for to build places where players just want to spend time in. You go there and you kind of get lost just marveling at the, at the beauty of the environment. And we absolutely want, as you can see in here, to have those kind of environments where you just want to spend time in. Yeah, and I think it's even, you know, with with, with new technology available to us and new consoles and PCs that we're able to, you know, obviously to take that to another level and, and show things in a at, a at a higher level of fidelity than you've, than you've ever seen before or ever even maybe expected. Uh, some of the early work that's kind of going on in, in our engine is, is, is just beautiful. So, so you've got the concept, obviously, of, of existing familiar faces, you know, the, the types of, of, of races and species that you would expect from a Mass Effect game. Um, obviously, since we really want to push the, this franchise more, uh, we are definitely developing new species, new alien races. And because of that, um, these new species, these new aliens do have their own architecture. So let's take a look at the next concept. Here's an example of the architecture uh, and potentially the uh, home of some of our new races. Um, see kind of a very uh, non-angular, a very rounded approach, kind of grounded. It looks like it's more built into the environment as opposed to kind of jutting out. Um, again, whenever we make a new species or a new race in these games, it's really important that we fully flesh them out. And part of doing that is kind of developing a lot of their culture, a lot of their backstory. And this is one example of that. And you can see in this that uh, tying it into the environment more, um, in this case, uh, you can imagine this as being part of uh, a world that, that you would land on. And, and one of the things that obviously is bringing uh, exploration up as one of the pillars that we're doing is finding a way to you know, have that interwoven throughout the game so that it's not just, oh, here's your exploration section, now here's your non-exploration section. And trying to find ways to, to tie all those things together. And that's what a lot of the, the concepts uh, that we're working on right now, especially like this, that are, are trying to um, uh, evoke so that we remember as we're developing the game that we don't just want these beautiful areas where you, know, you can only just walk around. They should be tied to something larger as well. Yeah, and I think it's important to, to specify also that when we talk about ex exploration, we're not only talking about discover discovering locations, and we're also talking about cultural exploration, and actually discovering those new races, or even sometimes known races, but there's that entire aspect that exploration is not only about the geography or the terrain that is around you, it's really about discovering other species, human species, and yourself, ultimately. So. Yeah, it, this concept is one of my favorite concepts uh, so far that our, our team has done, and they kick out, boy, I don't know, probably a th over a thousand by now. Uh, what I really like about this It, it is very beautiful, but you know you, you can tell by by the settlements and by that people have habitated here that it's a it's a good place. It's a nice place to go stay and kind of and kind of check out. Um, and I also think it implies that the people who live here are, are, are peaceful, just in the way they're integrated into the environment, into the way that they've designed their architecture. You This gives a this gives away an, an aura of of, of welcomeness, uh, which is which is pretty cool. And the thing I want to add to is is uh, not directly directly tied to the the concept, but I want to riff on what Mike and Mac were talking about, um, which is that exploration while something that we wanted to really bring back uh, in the franchise. It's not something that we want to force onto players, because to me, when I think of what it means to be building a role-playing game, um, I mean it a lot less in terms of pure mechanics. That are RPG and more, you know, going back to the days when I was playing a lot of pen and paper role-playing games, and that feeling of freedom. You get to decide what you want to do. And with a good dungeon master, um, basically he crafts uh, the experience around where you want to take the story uh, and basically playing it your way. 
Uh, and to me, that's basically what bringing back exploration means, is if, if it's something that you want to keep aside, um, it's up to you. Of course, it's, it's our job to make it interesting so that we don't want to put it aside. Uh, but at the same time, if you want to lose yourself just exploring things for hours on end, um, you, we want to make sure that you have the possibility to do so. So let's take a look at the next one. This is one of my personal favorites um, so far. I think we've uh, we really hit the idea of kind of mystery. Mystery and danger is part of this. It's a very unique architecture. This is, again, one of the architectures of our new species. Um, diff very different than the one you saw before. It's very different species alt altogether. Uh, this one is basically supposed to invoke kind of faults here and kind of going through these and exploring, meeting new creatures, having different experiences. Uh, this is definitely what we want to use um, as our blueprint for those kind of experiences. Yeah, and I think uh, the other thing it does a great job of uh, showing are those those uh, epic spaces that uh, you know we I think we all love from uh, you know 80s sci-fi when you get in there into these spaces that just seem unfathomable when you go in. You're like, what were they thinking when they built this place? And that is part of the mystery that you get to sort of uh, uncover uh, throughout the game as you're playing and and throughout the story, which is yep there are there are these uh, amazing. Uh, vaults or tombs and there is a uh, inherent mystery behind them and that's also part of the the exploration component of our game what i really like about this one is especially in contrast with the previous one is that it shows the range you know from the previous one that was very organic to this one where yes it feels mechanical it feels cold uh but in a way that is uh you know, really alien uh, in nature, uh, and that's kind of the uh, what we're trying to achieve with uh, the different environments in the game, a, a wide range of, of, yeah. of different experiences. And I think the, the previous one was inviting, yeah. where this one is the exact opposite, where something is weird, seems you always, there is no sense of scale, but I think everybody assumes how big it is. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and it's also interesting to see how it is clearly designed by an intelligent species and at the same time for our, again cultural discovery and archaeological feel of those obviously abandoned places. So probably some excellent opportunities to shoot things in the face in here. <laughs> <laughs> Could happen. Could happen. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, let's take a look uh, at the next one. One. So as Matt kind of mentioned uh, a little bit before, the hero experience uh, related to exploration is really important as well. So we want to give the player as many tools as possible to, to, to get that, um, to basically fulfill themselves and go through the planets, explore, learn, um, research, things like that. So this concept illustrates just one of the Shepard was when we even started the Mass Effect trilogy. Um, and so in order to do that, we have to, you know, make sure that, as Mike said, that person is equipped with the skills and the tools and everything necessary to, to survive becoming a hero. Uh, that will, of course, mean, um, you know, you know having uh, people alongside you who can help you. Uh, but it, you know, this image specifically some of the tools, and I think the other thing I like about this image is one of the other goals that we're trying to do is because this is about exploration and about sort of you, the player, going out and, and choosing your path and choosing your way through gameplay. We also want to try to keep the player immersed in the world as much as possible, um, so that we're not taking you out uh, in, uh, frequently for um, uh, taking away from the gameplay.
<laughs> like, this like, uh, this for me is, uh, you know, I kind of look at this and, and I try to look at this one from a perspective of a player or a fan. And, and this is, imagine the possibilities. You know, like, look at that and imagine as a player a, a universe where these you know there's just so many places to go see and experience and stories to to go and see and do and uh you know it's just it's just mind-blowing from a from a certain perspective yeah and i think it illustrates also pretty well the, that idea that we all we, with such a massive will we want to give the, the player a number of tools to explore it and manage it so they will um, so you can imagine what you, whatever you want with what that guy is doing, scanning, as Mike was mentioning, charting worlds, etc. Et but the important part is those tools that are actually focused on exploration once again. Mm -hmm. uh, because that really is the important point is that, you know, again, uh, just like the previous games, you're going to be running around, shooting, you're using your yep. guns, fighting with biotics. Um, to the same degree that you, you have in the past, but whenever you do want to spend time in exploration, we want to make sure that you're provided with the same quality of tools that you, you've had in combat before, so that it is as entertaining uh, to, to explore things. And that uh, uh, that piece of concept art basically hints at the, some of what these tools could be. Yeah, yeah and I think uh, Mac mentioned it earlier, but uh, even that part of exploration, as you just uh, said, also is also about fun. Mm -hmm. uh, it's not. It's something that you want to do, not something that the game makes you do. Absolutely. Uh, it's really about fun and having those, those great moments where it is actually enjoyable to work around the, the world outside of the um, classic combat story, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera, part of Mass Effect. So. Oh, sorry, <laughs> we've been talking quite a bit about exploration activities and things like that, but. Um, that doesn't necessarily take away or or remove the fact that there is there's a lot of conflict still in this game. This this game, there is conflict. There's a lot for your hero to have to solve. There's a lot for your hero to have to figure out. There's a lot of opportunities to shoot guys square in the face. Um, we just want to basically be able to marry those concepts properly so that the the experience is is a really well rounded experience. Let's take a look at this one now. Uh, so this. For me, this is probably my second favorite of the batch. This, for me, evokes a lot of what about space, right? Um, Mass Effect has always been a game with beautiful terrestrial environments, beautiful places to explore. We want to basically make sure that we're representing, well, what, what is space? Where are you? What is, what is the larger picture here? And I think this concept speaks to that a lot more. Yeah, and, and uh, to add to that, I'd also say we... often like to deal in the Mass Effect series with big ideas, very big ideas, uh, bold ideas around uh, you know, whether it's the original series, organics versus synthetics, um, but also large themes and that really sense of that sense of scale throughout, not just obviously in the world itself, but in the types of uh, situations that you find yourself in. Uh, one of the game is sort of a, a nice dichotomy of um, it is an epic adventure, but there's a personal journey with it as well. See an image like this, you'd be like, wow, that is, that's clearly like, that's the epic side. Coming up to it, well, what's their little journey? What are they on? What's happening with them? And I think, uh, you know, me finding ways to bring both of those, that's ultimately what will make, you know, images like this and the vast, you know, uh, spaces that we have interesting to people and, and more importantly, fun and memorable, which is what was the journey I went on? Who did I go on?
as a team, as a group? Yeah, actually, um, so the, the previous one, there was the, the hero standing there, and but the Mass Effect game is also about, still about relationships, and uh, you're not alone in that world exploring. Uh, the, the important part is actually how do you create relationship in that context, um, and and this this is still a, an absolute centerpiece of our game. Mm -hmm. And dynamics, of course, given that the context of the game is, is changing, the dynamics between you and, and the different characters you interact with has also uh, evolved uh, from from the previous context. Now, going back to the idea of space here. Uh, one of the, the, the lines that I've been using, in my head anyway, to um, kind of explain how we want to progress things on that front, it's really to take from the first trilogy space as a thing and um, make it become a place uh, to feel that really uh, it's as important a part of your exploration as, as, as the rest of the game, right? Um, again, uh, we have the means, if you're going to be exploring large parts of, 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 uh, of the galaxy um, might as well have part of it not necessarily be stuck on the ground all the time, right? So how do we incorporate that? In, in, you might want to explore the biggest part. Yes, the, the, part. <laughs> the empty part. <laughs> and it's we all remember what the Normandy meant to the players as well. Um, um, I think we're, I think we're taking, taking that, that and trying to bring that concept of exploration into the game well with whatever the player can use to travel through this area. I think that about wraps us up. Um, we've been through all the concepts, and uh, uh, hopefully you've learned and we haven't shared uh, too many spoilers. And hopefully you can take some of the stuff that we said and think and think and think harder and try and uh, figure out what we were talking about. Um, thanks okay. to everyone for, for tuning in. I mean, N7 Day is, is our chance to be able to do this with you. And really appreciate you guys coming along for the journey here. Yeah, yeah. thanks to... You guys, Montreal, um, thanks very much, obviously, to all the fans who are uh, watching this watching right this now. Right now. Just, remember, Just remember, it is N7 it is Day. N7 We've got uh, a lot of our lot partners, of our out, partners there out there with N7, N7 gear and exciting things exciting that you can purchase. Can purchase. That's uh, some uh, fun deals that you can get today only, I think, or you know, around this time. Uh, and stay tuned. There's going to be a lot more uh, in the future for Mass Effect. And uh, get out there and also don't forget to cheer our, our DA team on as uh, they're about a week and a bit away from release. So thank you again very much. Thank you guys uh, for listening. And uh, yes, as Mike mentioned, it's in seven days, so enjoy. Go back to your Shepard memories. I'm sure you have a lot. And uh, in the meantime, waiting for more info on the next Mass Effect. Yeah, go play DI. Dragon Age Inquisition. It's awesome. So. Yeah, I just want to say uh, this Mass Effect community is is amazing. Um, I've I've been part of several different communities through through my years in, in the industry, and this one is probably the most impressive one in terms of just uh, your eagerness for information and, and your 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 wantingness to, to be part of it all. Um, just seeing my Twitter feed kind of blow up today is is, is reassured that, and I just love seeing it. So, thank you. Yeah, thank you. Um, I hope that we showed you stuff that uh, was interesting to you guys. Um, I, I, I trust it is, uh, given that it represents a, a lot of what we're trying to, to shoot for without, uh, to my point, having too many spoilers. We've been privileged not only to, to be able to work with a franchise that is so fleshed out and so revered, uh, but also to be given the time and resources to um, meet the ambition that we have for the game. Uh, so, you know, it's it's one of those classic uh, when it's done game, uh, but we're actually making really good progress. And again, with the recent tr uh, transition of Dragon Age people into the project, things are really picking up steam right now uh, in, in a way that uh, uh, we should be able to show you stuff, take it to the next step um, at some point in the coming months without making a promise, because again, <laughs> everything is when it's done. Thank you. <laughs>